Good day, Cochrane. Welcome to another edition of Fireside Chat with Mayor Jeff Janung. I am Mayor Jeff Janung. Um, yesterday's council meeting, it was a lengthy meeting about uh, quite a few items. So today we're going to talk about um, the delegations we had, Warm Water Therapy Society, uh, the Bow Valley Rugby Club, Alberta Health Services Report. Um, then we, in bylaws, we talked about the multifamily waste management bylaw, uh, Rivercrest undeveloped road closure, land use bylaw amendment for 324 Third Street West, and then we had an annual fire report from the chief, and council talked about a tri-site concept plan project. So those are the uh, topics of conversation for today. Uh, so let's get right to it. Um, delegations, Warm Water Therapy Pool Society. Uh, they came last night to talk to us about uh, the benefits of the warm water therapy pool that is obviously a part of our um, pool down at the Spray Lake Sawmill Rec Center. Uh, that pool is already operational as everybody knows. Um, this society ha was instrumental in getting that uh, pool built so they came to council last night and talked to us about uh, some of the benefits of warm water therapy and um, just some of the trials and tribulations they had over the 10 years that it took them to fundraise over $100,000 towards the warm water therapy pool um, that now we can all enjoy. So uh, thanks to them for all of the hard work over the years and uh, the fruits of their labor are now in the Spray Lake Society Rec Center for all of us to enjoy and um, so if you haven't checked it out go down there and see what all of the hard work's been all about. Uh, next up was the Bow Valley Rugby Club. Uh, they came to council to present to us about um, how much they've grown over the years. Uh, I think there's over 400 uh, rugby players in Cochrane and growing every year, 5%. I believe they said the number was last night. Um, so they are uh, doing very well as a club. Um, but of course, like everyone else in the community, are looking for more space. They're bursting at the seams. The pitch at uh, Mitford is not uh, able to keep up with all the demands that they have. Um, so they have a site that they have looked at, a 16 acre site on Towers Trail that the town owns that they are proposing to uh, use for their rugby needs. So council accepted the report last night and has passed on the information to our newly formed uh, Parks and Rec Committee to take a look at. So. I think the rugby club was a little bit disappointed. Actually, I know they were. They would like uh, to have had council approve the study to have their concept approved for the lands on Towers Trail, but uh, council felt this was a little bit premature that we would like to see the uh, Parks and Rec club, uh, Committee take a look at um, all of the needs of all of the users in the community before we start uh, basically just doling out lands for, uh, for clubs. So um, we have a lot of groups that are needing space and this is one so we may in fact be end up with the rugby club there but um, council just needed that to go to the committee first so that will be coming back to council soon. Uh, next up, Alberta Health Services report. We had a couple gentlemen in the chambers last night talking to us about uh, the EMS uh, specifically the ambulance service for Cochrane we have two ambulances that serve our community. Um, council had a lot of questions about wait times, um, what happens in the event of a code red, uh, questions like that that the gentleman answered quite well. Uh, they are working with the province, or they work for the province, in um, giving us our, our, our EMS service. So. Um, there's a few hiccups that we're trying to work with with them. Um, one of them being uh, the major one, I guess, and this is no surprise to everybody that uh, uh, wait times at the hospital is something that they, they are dealing with. Um, it's close to, and I don't quote me on the number, but most, almost as much time is spent in the hospital as it is on, um, on a call. So that is one of the hurdles that they're dealing with. And of course, when our EMS is waiting in the hospital, they're not, um, to be, they're not in our community. So that is a, a concern for council that we are monitoring closely and uh, we will keep you updated on that. 
Um, next, um, Rivercrest undeveloped road closure. There's a road allowance in Rivercrest that uh, is deemed unnecessary for a road. So council's gone through the procedure of closing the road and now the road will go up for um, public, um, well it'll come back to council for uh, what we'll do to um, get rid of the land, whether we want to keep it, whether we want to sell it. Um, so that's in Rivercrest. Um, so that'll be coming back for that. Uh, next we talked about multifamily waste management bylaw. So this is another step towards getting Cochrane closer to uh, no organics going to the landfill in Calgary. Um, uh, Fabrizio from the waste management um, portion of our, our of the town is um, very good at, at his job and he's brought this forward now as at the next step of to have a multi-family um, sites in Cochrane so all the condos and all of the seniors housing any place where there's more than um, two or three people living or, or houses together uh, we're unable to have um, their organics picked up by the town. So uh, Fabrizio and his team have been working with the multifamily sites and they're all on board. And coming, we, so we passed a bylaw last night that will um, put in, in place a bylaw, uh, the, sorry, the organics pickup for multifamily sites. So I believe that's starting in August. Um, they have a few, um, weeks here to get a plan together on how each site is going to individually work with their residents to be able to collect organics. So it'll be good to get less going into the landfill and more into the organics pickup. Um, next we had a land use bylaw amendment for 324 3rd Street West. It was a first reading and we set a um, public hearing so that we'll be coming back to council with um, with that. I believe the landowner there wants to um, uh, change the land use so that they can have a um, an art studio. That's kind of the what I've heard so far. Next, we had the annual fire report from uh, Chief Humphrey, Humphreys. He um, gave us uh, the rundown of all the stats for the fire department over the year. Um, long story short, the fire department's doing an excellent job. They are tracking their response times and the average for the community is in around eight minutes, which is right where um, they would like to be. The province's standard is 10, so we're a couple minutes below that. So good work to the fire department in that regards. Um, there's a other th issues that um, they've highlighted that our staff are working with them on and we will have a report for at the end of the year on those things. The last item on the agenda was um, the Fifth Avenue Lands Study. So we now are calling that the Tri-Site Concept Plans Project. And that is the project where we will study the Fifth Avenue site where the rodeo grounds are and the Lions Club, uh, the former Esso Bulk dealership property which the town owns down on the railway, and the land across the street from that and across from the library uh, is another one acre site that the town owns and we are embarking on a study to look at what all three of those sites can be used for for community needs. Um, we have an advisory group that has been is going to be struck. Um, last night there was a whole lot of debate on whether council should sit on this committee or leave it to the public and to the um, uh, consultant to drive or be involved and um, ultimately just be involved right from the ground up and have a say in what's going on. So uh, a lot of debate back and forth whether or not we wanted to be seen as influential or steering that committee but it was ultimately decided that uh, this is an important uh, piece of work for the community. Um, I've been on record saying that I believe that this is the second most influential, important piece of work that this council will do, uh, second only to uh, traffic and transportation. So um, this, this um, project has the potential to be uh, very transformational for our community, especially in the downtown core. Um, with all of the user groups that I mentioned before looking for space on the playing fields, we also have a lot of community groups looking for land and space for um, 
you know, seniors, um, the Lions, the Rodeo, and everybody's well aware of the conversations we've had um, with all of these topics and user groups. So it'll be good to put that to rest this year. So we have decided to put one council member on that committee and that will come back at the next meeting for the terms of reference to uh, determine exactly who. But um, council will sit on that committee and help guide as we go through the process. And um, I look forward to seeing all the good work and getting a concept plan and drawings for those three sites done this year. We're looking to have that wrap up by November is the target so that we have a target that we can hit and then people will know where their groups are going to be located, what kind of size of buildings we're going to look for and we can start fundraising, we can start building and we can start moving forward instead of being stuck in this whirlpool eddy, if you will, of um, uncertainty and I'm just really happy we've made a decision to move forward and get that underway. So essentially um, I've wrapped this long meeting. Uh, we finished at I think quarter after 10 last night, uh, so four, well over four hours of meeting and I've put it all into hopefully just around 10 minutes. So um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back at you here in another couple weeks with another fireside chat. Thanks for joining me.